In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We have not always worshipped God, our Father, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Holy Spirit, our Guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that, always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways. My thoughts above your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to all who call him. The, the Lord, Lord is, is close, close to, to all, all who, who call, call him. him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great, highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. The, the Lord, Lord is, is close, close to all, all who call, call him. him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The, the Lord, Lord is close to all who call him. him. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. The Lord, the Lord is, is close to all, all who call, call him. him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessings on the Lord who comes in the name of the King. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing round, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? 
because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you go to my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the 11th hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The men who came last, they said, have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is what's probably a very familiar tale, the story of the workers in the vineyard. Men are hired at the start of the day and at various points during the day, including an hour before the end of the day. When the time comes to be paid, the latest arrivals get paid first, and worst, they get the same wages as those who have toiled through the heat of the day. Those who've worked all day are, perhaps understandably in one sense, a bit annoyed and have a good old moan at the vineyard owner who has, to be fair, pay them what he always promised. From a very human standpoint, the response of those who worked all day seems not in the least unreasonable. Well, we all have our vineyard moments, times when someone may seem to us to have been favoured before us, or promoted beyond us, or appointed above us, or given some choice responsibility ahead of us. It's perhaps only natural to feel annoyed when this happens. But that isn't what faith is about, surely. Jesus certainly didn't think so. The last shall be first and the first last, he says. If you're anything like me, brought up as a Christian in a church-going family and coming to church all my life, it's all too easy to look at those who've experienced some sort of road to Damascus experience, which has transformed them from an unbeliever into a believer, with perhaps more than a twinge of envy. I've spoken before about a friend of mine who came to faith as an adult because of an extraordinary moment of healing for someone very close to him. For him there's no doubt at all that God is there, that the Lord walks with him every moment of his life. I said to him, perhaps somewhat ruefully, that I often felt rather jealous of someone like him who'd encountered God in a life-changing way and come to faith as an adult and been baptised and confirmed. Somehow there was something about his faith, I said, that I felt I couldn't match, or quite touch even. There was an excitement and a kind of resoluteness about his faith, which I just didn't feel. He smiled and said simply, but you grew up with God. I've often looked back on that moment. That simple remark has stayed with me. You grew up with God. That thought was humbling and thought-provoking, and it caused me to re-evaluate my faith and my thinking and to view things in a rather different way. I think perhaps that was a vineyard moment for me. The last shall be first and the first last. Becoming part of the kingdom of God is an extraordinary gift. Faith is an extraordinary gift. Whether we've brought up a Christian and have stayed with it ever since, whether we've come to faith later in life, whether we've had a momentary conversion experience or travelled a long and tortuous journey towards God, faith remains precious. Jesus is telling us this in the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Salvation is for all. Those who worked only the last hour, that is, those who come to believe very late in life, nonetheless receive in full measure the offer of salvation. Those who have to use my friend's phrase, grown up with God, receive the same. None of this happens on our own merits, but by the grace of God. And that's what Jesus is telling us, as he does over and over again. Salvation comes to those who believe. It doesn't just come to those who believe for a long time. 
And so what of us, we who do indeed believe? What is our task? Our task is not to be like the workers who worked all day. We must not begrudge those who arrive late to the party. No one is entitled to anything. Christian life is a matter of service. Our vocation is to be evangelists. Now that's a scary word. We don't have to stand on street corners waving a Bible and shouting at passing crowds. We don't have to be theological experts. We don't need to leave our beards to become so unkempt that rooks nest in them. We don't have to wear sandals in winter. We don't have to do anything very strange at all. We have to try to live our lives as Christ would like us to, while recognising that this is virtually impossible, and pray for the strength and the will to go on trying. We have to try to be kind, loving, compassionate, forgiving, but at the same time resolute in our faith. We must try to trust in God and listen to what he's calling us to do in our lives. We must welcome all we meet. We must allow others to receive, perhaps before us. We must worship. We must pray. We must be joyful that we are people of faith. In fact, we should be overjoyed that we are people of faith. Yes, overjoyed. We must be joyful too for those and in those who come to faith, especially perhaps in those whose faith and commitment seems to surpass our own very quickly. The last will be first, and the first last, says the Lord. Whatever we think we've accomplished in our lives, whatever material wealth we may have accumulated, whatever elevated status we might have achieved, wherever we might be in the pecking order, all that is nothing in faith. And it is faith, belief in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, which brings salvation. Salvation comes to those who believe. And so we declare our faith in the words of the creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of all, all that, that is seen, seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God light, light from light, light true God from true God, God begotten, begotten not made, of one, one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. In response to Lord, hear our prayer, is let our cry come unto thee. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for Christ's church, for our Archbishop Justin, for Jonathan our Bishop, Father David our parish priest, and for the international leaders of the church, for Francis the Pope, and Bartholomew the Ecumenical Patriarch. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for all those who have stopped believing in God. Bring them safely back to your church, so they may know your ways, your thoughts, and your love. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for all those engaged with international support throughout the world for the Commonwealth and Foreign and Development Office, for all who work there, for the Global Response Unit, organising aid from the UK, for the Crisis Centre and for those organising shelter and a home for those who have been made homeless by disaster, war or famine. 
Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for the High Court of Parliament, for Mr Johnson, our Prime Minister, and for the leaders of all political parties, for Keir Starmer, Ian Blackwood, Ed Davey, Geoffrey Donaldson, Liz Roberts and Caroline Lucas. May their parties represent our views, making good and just laws for the people whom they serve. I bid you pray for Elizabeth, our Queen. Direct this nation and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that men may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry to come unto thee. I bid you pray for all who pass through our parish by road or rail. Keep them safe in their journey. For all who work in the Broadway and all those who live in St Thomas's Drive, Tilston Road, the Lawns, Thornton Grove, the Avenue and Took Close. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for our national community, for the National Health Service, the police, the fire brigade, the ambulance service, and for the other emergency services, the Royal National Life Boat Institute, Pothole Rescue, Mountain Rescue, the AA and the RAC. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for the sick, for those who are self-isolating, those who are under treatment at hospital, for those who are disabled and unable to get out, for those suffering with long-term health issues. I bid you also pray for all drug addicts, alcoholics, the unemployed, the unemployable, and those suffering from mental health issues, for the homeless, and those who suffer with a health condition. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. I bid you pray for the employed, and for those who make valuable contributions to our society, supporting all those who are in need, especially those supporting food banks. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. And we ask the prayers of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, St. Anselm, our holy patron, for the humble and faithful departed, especially with those who have died recently and those who have died without access to priests or sacraments. In a moment of silence, we remember all those who are dear to us. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. And we join our prayers with Blessed Mary, ever Virgin Mother of God, Our Lady of Walsingham, whose feast day we keep on Thursday, in their most powerful intercession, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. Hasten, Lord, the day when people will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at table in your kingdom and we shall see your Son in his glory. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Saviour Christ came to speak peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Let 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all, of all his church. church. God of mercy, accept our offering and make it a source of blessing for us. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us in him a new people to show forth your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, Anselm and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence in the words our Saviour gave us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I, I shall be healed. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send, Send us out, out in the power of your Spirit, spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.